Last year I built a really powerful robotic chassis with crazy motors and I experimented with LiDAR, it was a lot of fun and I promised that I will develop this project more and add a more powerful computer like a Raspberry Pi, program it with Python and then maybe experiment even with ROS. I never did that because I procrastinated a lot, but today is the day and finally I'm going to add a more powerful computer, actually pretty capable computer that is also pretty small. We'll see what this computer can do and how you can train your own neural networks to detect objects and make this robot follow, for example, the red ball. This is the chassis before I started working on this video and this is the chassis after I finished working on this video. A lot has changed, like almost everything. The chassis itself is not the focus of this video, but I'm gonna make another one just about it, how I designed and built it, so if you have any questions or you just want to see that video, you can let me know in the comments. This is the Recomputer J10 by Seed Studio. It's a series of computers based on NVIDIA modules and in this case we have NVIDIA Jetson Nano in here with a carrier board from Seed Studio and a nice case. We have three USB ports, Ethernet, data transfer power and full HDMI port. Here on the side we have just some holes for the cables and here with this pin you can open the top case that is held with magnets and inside we can see the module itself. It has a passive heat sink without any fans and with just a few screws we can remove the module from the case. And here without the case you can see all the additional ports and how the PCB looks like. On the bottom we have a legend for all the additional pins. Here we have something to configure the board and also the micro SD card slot that is on the carrier board. And here we have a connectors similar to the ones on the Raspberry Pi but it's not the same pinout so be careful with that and to the connectors on the right you can connect for example cameras. If you feel a bit lost with all the different versions no worries because I felt the same so Nvidia manufactures different modules like the Jetson Nano and then these modules are plugged into the carrier board also manufactured by Nvidia but also by different companies like Seed Studio. And Seed Studio manufactures the Recomputer J10 and together with the case you can just buy that on their website. For me the biggest advantage is that the Recomputer comes with 16GB of eMMC and the operating system is already installed unlike on the original developer kit from Nvidia. That way you can just plug in a few cables and you are ready to start experimenting. You can find there a few examples pre-installed that process images and videos live or even generate like 3D graphics. It's pretty cool, but that's not what I want to do for my robot. There is one thing I really wanted to work on the Jetson and that was a remote desktop. I tried a lot of different options, some of them weren't working at all, but two of them were working kind of fine. The first one was VNC. It was working, but it was terribly slow. So slow that it wasn't really possible to use it properly. And then I found no machine I think it was called and no machine was working it was fast it was easy to use but it wasn't easy to install there were so many different things to install both on the Jetson and my computer and in the end I thought that I'm not really happy with this solution I prefer to have a clean system on the Jetson Nano and I decided to install it again. Now installing this operating system is kind of easy thanks to special software but to get this software to work you need Linux. This is like an older version of Ubuntu that you need and I was able to install it on a virtual machine and then from this virtual machine burn the image of the operating system on the eMMC of my Jetson Nano. Speaking of the operating system, later I had to transfer the whole image of the operating system on the SD card because there was not enough space to collect the data and train the network and also install all the necessary components. So I had to transfer it to the SD card, then install everything again and train the network that way. Fortunately, there is a lot of tutorials on Seed Studio website, on Nvidia forums and GitHub and you most likely will find someone that face the same problem as you. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB. JLCPCB is a PCB manufacturer that I am cooperating with for years. They have been producing basically most of my boards for any project. They have a really nice calculator where you can configure your board, CD price, order PCB assembly and stencil. They have also a really nice Gerber viewer that I'm always using to check my boards before ordering. And they also offer 3D printing services with various technologies, really nice calculator and fast production times. Some time ago they manufactured these PCBs for my bachelor physics project the Star Tracker, as well as this custom soil moisture sensor that I designed a while ago and that I will test soon. 
Check out the link in the description if you want to learn more. It's time to move to the fun part and the fun part begins at this GitHub repository, one of the best I've seen in my life. Here you will find everything you need about the AI and running it on the Jetson and I used a lot of that but also a lot of collecting your own datasets and running it on Jetson Nano because that's what I will do later. Also YouTube playlist with a lot of videos connected to this GitHub repository is super useful too. I wanted to start by running a few examples of pre-trained network with this camera, but it wasn't working, so I had to use this one instead. After spending some time on installing and configuring it, if you did everything right, you will learn that you are a seatbelt sitting in a prison. Seatbelt. <laughs> seatbelt. Cool. To be fair, the quality of that camera was pretty terrible, as you can see, and I'm recording screen with a camera right here. Also, the network wasn't really certain, like the percentages of me being a seatbelt are pretty low, fortunately. So I tried with something simpler, like bananas, apples, tomatoes. It was detecting bananas and apples pretty nicely, the tomato was just too hard for it. It also recognized the oscilloscope, it struggled a bit with a camera on a tripod, but also detected the spotlight in the background. I was quite fortunate to buy almost for nothing this very nice camera for robotics and as you can see we have a huge improvement in image quality and hopefully also in the image recognition. Let's take a look around my desk and see what it can recognize. That's a tripod, which is partially true, but it's also a spotlight. It recognized Jetson as a modem. Here we have some screwdrivers in the background, so that's pretty much correct. It set a ruler here, which is quite nice, and oscilloscope is also recognized. That's great. Running the pre-trained networks is a lot of fun, but what I'm really interested in is creating my own dataset and then with this dataset train my own network to detect different objects and in my case I will use balls. A red ball, tennis ball and a football and that's what I want to detect. The problem that I showed you before where I have been detecting the apples, bananas and oscilloscopes, that's called a classification problem. The network sees an image and then it tells you that for 50% that is an oscilloscope, that's how classification works. In the detection we not only want to classify what is in the image but we also want to know the position of that thing. So I not only want to know that there is a red ball in the image, I want to know where it is exactly in that image and that data is necessary if you want to do a robot that should follow a ball. To collect the data and train the network for detection, I had to take a lot of images of the balls and manually label with rectangles the position of each ball in each image, then move the balls a little bit, do the same, take the image. It took a lot of time, but it was quite simple with all the software and it was just fun and enjoyable thing to do. I think a really decent way to visualize the whole dataset is to create a time lapse with all the images and that is exactly what you see right now. Just look how lost I'm here. I wasn't able to start the training, I wasn't able to even install PyTorch, nothing was working. In the end, as I mentioned, I was able to move the operating system to the SD card where I had more space and then on this SD card I installed Docker and with Docker I was able to finally start the training. Training is a great opportunity to watch some YouTube videos because it really takes quite a lot of time. To save some RAM, it's a good idea to disable the graphical user interface of your desktop and use just terminal. What you see is actually how the network is training. But after the successful training, you should see that. Only works at a close distance, that is a problem. But well, it is able to detect the ball, that's cool. Tennis ball, nothing. Okay, how about silver ball? Nothing. Okay. Previous scene was recorded at night with artificial lighting and here we have a daylight, that's why there is a big difference in the image. And here I successfully retrieved data from the Python script with the position of the detected object. And once all the separate pieces were working nicely, it was time to integrate it all together. I attached all the components to each floor of the robot and then I simply assembled all the floors together. It worked pretty nicely and it was like easy to lay out everything on each floor. 
But then there was a problem that my USB Wi-Fi module was bending the USB port, so I simply took off the case of this module and that way it fits really nicely and nothing is bending. But quickly I ran into another problem and that was connected to the LiPo batteries and my charger. Looks like my charger is charging only two cells of 3S LiPo battery and that is a big problem because one cell is completely uncharged and the battery is unbalanced. So I thought with the lab bench power supply and with the limited current I can kind of use it to charge one of the cell of the batteries. Of course I have been observing the voltage on the battery and the charging current all the time to make sure that everything is okay and for that this Bluetooth multimeter was pretty useful. The robot is ready, I can move the motors but I haven't tested the driving capabilities yet. I have to still finish the Python code that will actually follow the ball but I have already the ball detection part ready and moving the motors part ready and now I just have to connect these two which should be pretty straightforward. I solved the problem with batteries, batteries are charged so now I can just put them in place, put the robot on the ground and connect through SSH and start working on it. The robot does not move very smoothly and you can see it jumping back and forth on each direction change and that is not perfect, we need acceleration. To implement it, I thought I will do something that I don't do very often, and that is use the knowledge from the university. We have been recently talking about multi-threading, so I thought I will use that in Python to implement the acceleration, ChatGPT helped with that, and after programming a bit more, I had a smooth acceleration. It was working super super nice. I know that multi-threading for that is maybe an overkill, but it worked for me and it was a simple solution, so I'm happy with that. Just look how smooth that is. We are running that at 47 frames per second. That is a pretty decent result. It was just 40 when I was using the screen. Okay, let's connect the motors. Okay. Instead of following the ball, it is actually escaping from the ball. I think I fixed all the problems. Let's see if it works. And indeed, it was working great, at least some parts of it. For example, the neural network for detecting the ball. That part was working great. Problem was the algorithm for controlling the robot steering to a proper direction based on the image. And that was something that I tried to fix later, but it ended up working even worse. There were also some problems related to the camera, like the lightning conditions, because I trained the network during the day and then I recorded and tested it at night, but later when I checked the performance during the day, it was not really that different, it was pretty similar. More important problem is a narrow field of view of this camera, and for that reason, the robot was not able to detect the ball when it was really close to it. Now I'm not really sure about this one, but I think that images are downscaled to 300 by 300 pixels while training, and for that reason detecting small objects like this red ball at a bigger distance is a problem. And well, for the next robot I should probably like use bigger objects and also train the robot at a bigger space. And here, after my experiments, you can see that the robot is going crazy. I changed the algorithm and it really doesn't work that great. So, to conclude, well, sometimes simple solutions are the best, like this old robot that I built. It simply follows the ball, it has a lot of downsides to the method that I used to follow this ball, but it just works for a simple thing like this one. So sometimes simple solutions are great. But this little Jetson computer is something that I will definitely use in my future projects.